And welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to be showing you how I developed a Zelda-inspired update for my free-to-play arcade spellcasting game called Cosmic Megas. And I first developed this game as an entry for Loading Dare 47, stuck in a loop. Gary! Uh, I was just looking for the sports channel, Gary. I ended up in 144th place, which is pretty damn good considering the 3,000 submissions. There will be a link down below if you want to play it in your browser. The gameplay loop was you wait for enemies to cast spells, then steal them and use it against them. I also added a feature that was this bubble that reverts time, kind of like the time stone does in Marvel. I uploaded a whole devlog on how I developed this submission taking inspiration from Rubik, a playable hero from Dota 2, and Doctor Strange from the Marvel Universe, so if that interests you, go check it out, there will be a link down below. After Lodum Dare was over, I genuinely liked the game mechanic of stealing spells and using them to defeat enemies, so I worked on the game for an extra 2 months and published it on Steam as a free to play game. Cool, now that you are caught up with the development progress of Cosmic Megas, let's begin the update, shall we? One of the things I enjoy about this game is the fact that since we are a cosmic being, we can do pretty much anything when it comes to updates. Want the next update to be in a different planet? You got it. Wanted to have Star Wars references? Maybe Star Trek? How about Super Mario references? They could all apply to this game, since we are a wizard flying through the cosmos, right? The possibilities for content is quite infinite. Yeah, boy. So, as the title of this video states, this update will be based off the Zelda games. First thing I had to do was choose an iconic area where this update is going to be based off. I'm a big fan of the melody in the Lost Woods area, I've always liked this area, especially in the Ocarina of Time. There were a few options when it came to the map. We could have taken inspiration from the area that has all these cave-like entrances, or the maze that you have to go through after that. But I settled on the last area, where you learn the melody of the Lost Woods, and also the fact that it is a square area makes it perfect for my gameplay. I began by creating the scene in 3D using a picture reference, then imported all the assets I could not create on the game engine like the tree trunks, stairs and pedestal. With all the assets already created, I just needed to assemble them in the game engine. Here's a quick time lapse of all the things coming together. I really think the post processing as well as the particles bring the map together quite nicely. I made these particles that look kind of like wisps just floating around. You cannot interact with them though, they are just eye candy. Same with these god rays, they are just there to make the level look pretty. There was one thing that was bothering me about the player character model, and it was that it looked too human, so I remodeled it. I gave him claws as well as these weirdly shaped legs, kinda like a kangaroo legs. On top of that, I wanted to give the player the ability to customize the look of his character, so I created a few cosmetics that you can unlock in the game. Moving on to more visual improvements, I really dislike how the main menu Nebula looked, so I came up with this instead. It's a visual effect graph that contains a script that basically changes its color and moves its position whenever it is too far away from the camera, and we get this. Procedural Nebulae. I think it looks pretty fucking awesome, and the fact that we can change its speed and you don't even notice them responding on the game window, I think it's pretty cool. Okay, so for the main enemy you will encounter in this map, it only makes me. sense if I choose Help the Biko Scruff. Is that how you pronounce it? Tiko, Tiku, Scruff, because, well, you know, this enemy is pretty much everywhere in the Lost Woods area, and plus it being this shape and looking somewhat comical fits in perfectly with the other enemies we already have in the game. So far we have Solar, Ice, and Arcane enemies. With this new addition, we will have a nature-based enemy, which is pretty great. So I try to keep it rather low poly and then use shaders in the future to make it look more decent. 
After the mesh was done, I hand painted it its skin and changed it to a grayscale so that I could control its color inside the game engine. Then I added the bones and made sure that each bone affected the right part of the mesh. What this means is basically we do not want foot bone to be able to move the nose of the model, right? This is a very common thing you do when creating 3D assets that need to be deformed with animations. Speaking of animations, I gave him a shooting animation, a spawn animation, an idle animation, and a walking animation that looks pretty funny because, you know, this game is not serious at all. We also need two new models for the spells this little guy will be casting. One will be this brambles kind of like thing, which is basically a twig with its UVs vertically placed so that we fade it in and out using a UV node inside the shader later. The other model we need is a boomerang. This was quite easy to make and I ended up using the same texture as the main model so that they fit in together nicely. After importing the models into my game engine, I proceeded to create the shaders for it using the visual shader editor called Shadergraph in Unity. We needed a spawn effect just like when my other little guys spawn. There is this um, portal underneath them. For the scrubbling, I will use this, that it looks kind of like leaves. You might also have noticed this subtle movement on the leaves as well as the black part of the scrubbling is the star shader and the eyes. Well, they blink now too. This is all done through shader manipulation. Another shader I needed to make was for the brambles and that was quite an easy to do. This is what it looks like. So the brambles race over time and then this extends outwards on a specific direction. This is what will make the uh, player slow, but not damage you, it will only slow you down. So try to avoid this. I just realized I haven't really shown you how the map plays, so let's take a quick look. Of course, I have yet to program the new enemies and implement them inside the spawn manager, but um, let's just mess around a bit. This might look really chaotic, but trust me, once you understand the basic gameplay loop and get used to the spells being used, it's a pretty fun experience. It's finally time to program these little guys. I'm trying to create a unique enemy here in comparison to the other enemies that are already in the game, right? This new enemy I'm calling Scrubbling will spawn and hold its position until you come near him, then he will pop up and attack you. This was quite easy to program, so let's check it out. Alright, that's pretty cool. I wonder what they would look like on a different map. There they are. <laughs> I love the way they just wiggle about. <laughs> Whenever you start a new game and land, there is an emblem that pops up, so I created that very quickly and this is what it looks like. It's like the Triforce, but of course, you know, I, I cannot do the Triforce because of, well, copyright claim. <laughs> I had an idea to create this very mellow leaf explosion whenever they spawn. Moving on to the new spells, let's do the boomerang first. After some trial and error, I was able to make the boomerang go around on a circular trajectory. Then as the BFX artist that I am, <laughs> I had another idea to make this boomerang look cooler. As of right now, when the boomerang returns, it just disappears. I thought it would be a good idea to destroy the boomerang into tiny little pieces. Let's see it now. Okay, it is starting to look very nice. Very nice. Next spell was the brambles. I needed to figure out how to rotate this properly so that it is facing the player, or if the player uses it, it faces the enemies, right? After a little while of programming and trying to understand freaking quaternion rotations, which I've always struggled with when it comes to C-sharp programming, I had it working somewhat okay. I also gave them a Casby effects of tiny little brambles at their feet. 
For every spell in the game, there has to be an icon. So I made icons for the brambles, boomerang, and a third spell, which I have yet to talk about. It's a pretty useless spell though. <laughs> it just morphs you into a random object. Since you know, when the scrublings spawn, they spawn as little acorns. So if you steal a spell right after they spawn, or pop up when you come near them, then you steal this useless morphins spell thing. We continue by creating the image file for the map, the one we need to display when the player is selecting a map. I just took a bird's eye view picture and then edited a bit. We also need to create the image files for all the new Steam achievements and integrate them inside Steamworks, which took me quite a while but I finally done did it. I was getting pretty close to finishing up the update, there was just a few more things I wanted to improve and that was for the map selection menu. I redesigned it all and created 3D meshes of each map logo so that it could display them here. I had almost forgotten to implement the cosmetics, I created a few more of them as well as designed the icons to display them and the window pop up when you unlock them. The way you unlock them is that whenever you finish a game with say 30 kills, then you have a 30% chance of earning a cosmetic, and if you win with 100 kills, then you have a 100% chance of getting an item. Very easy to unlock cosmetics in this game. The last two things I had to do was add a new Steam leaderboard for the Lost Woods map, and also create a new preview for all three new spells. Alright, that sums up the update, let's check it out! Here we are in the options menu. I added an option to change the spell steal and spell cast buttons, but other than that, nothing new here. Let's take a quick peek at the achievements. Ok, cool. Leaderboard. Yep, yep. Mm, please do not remove my invisible be dead. Thank you. Maybe I should add subtitles to the voice lines on these menus. Next update, I guess. I edited my voice to some kind of um, ethereal. <laughs> Let's peep the new map selection menu. Slain warriors. Good thing I'm a wizard. Yeah, I really like how it turned out. I'm confused as to what this is supposed to be. I hope no trees come knocking on the tower's doorstep when I am there. Last thing I had to do was commission some work from a composer for the theme song. Ivan Dutch made this song for the Lost Woods map. Here's a quick peek. Big shout out to Ivan, he fucking killed it. Much later. So I worked on it for a whole month updating the enemy models, animations, visual effects, training game mode and a few other things here and there like subtitles. If you want to play it, go ahead, it is free on Steam. Let's see if you guys can beat my high scores. <laughs> I've been planning my next game for a couple of months now and was waiting to finish this update to begin working on it, so stay tuned for my next devlog where I begin my really, really cool new project. And that is it. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you would like to see more game dev content, I upload videos on various different things related to game dev, so subscribe if that interests you. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.